In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this funky space mine. I would say it's a beginner to intermediate level tutorial. So for someone who's fairly comfortable with the interface and the very basics of the shader editor. I run through it all fairly quickly. If you want a more detailed in-depth breakdown of things, then check out my other playlists on this channel, or you could buy one of my really fantastic in-depth courses. You can find a discount coupon in the description. So I'm in the basic startup file. My shortcut keys are down the bottom here and I'm using Blender 3.1.2. Now to start off with, we want a sphere instead of a cube. So we'll delete the default cube, shift A to add, mesh, and then UV sphere. And that's the base of our space mine. Next, we want to make the nodules to stick on the outside of our mine. I don't know what they're called. I tried to look it up, but couldn't find it. Let me know in the comments below if you know. So I'll move my 3D cursor over to here with shift right click. So it's away from our sphere, shift A to add. And for this, we'll add a cylinder. You can change the parameters of your cylinder down here, but the default is absolutely fine. Let's come to front view. Move that to the side here and we'll scale it down a bit. Now let's start editing the shape. I can press tab to go into edit mode or edit mode up here and I can select the top face. So three to go to face mode or face mode up here, select the top face and maybe scale it down. G to grab in the Z, move it down to somewhere around here. And we've got a very basic module. Let's change the shape of it slightly. So I can press control R to do a loop cut, use my wheel to create an extra one like this and left click once and then position them where I want them and then left click again to set them. Now I want my gap between the two to be smaller, so I can select this edge loop with Alt left click, and then I can double tap G, so GG to edge slide, and that will slide your edge up and down, and I can bring it to somewhere around here. Then to select this face loop around here, I press three to go to face mode, and then Alt left click on one of the edges going across the direction of the face loop. So Alt left clicking, these edges will select the entire face loop. I can then press E to extrude, S to scale, and Shift Z, so I don't scale in the Z axis, and then I can pull in this sort of inset like this. I might want to scale that down very slightly, so S then Z to sort of have a little bit of a curve to these shapes. It just looks a little bit nicer. Now there's a few ways we can make this look a bit more interesting. If I select the top edge loop, so two to go to edge mode, Alt left click on one of the edges to select the edge loop, and Control B to bevel. I can then create a bevel like this, use my wheel as well to create a smoother bevel, such like this. Now, if your bevel is acting a little strangely, it could be because you have non-uniform scale. So if I go back to object mode quickly and press N to get up my toolbar and go to item, my scale is uniform, therefore my bevel will be nice and even. But if you find it's going way into the middle, yet not round the corner very far, it's probably because this is not uniform. In order to change this back to one, we can press Control A to apply the scale that we've made. So click on scale, you can see that's all changed to one, and now your bevel will act normally. So I'll press N to get rid of that panel, and you can make any adjustments to this by selecting the edge loops, maybe scaling some up, beveling it a bit more with Control B, Control R to do another loop cut, scale that in, Control B to bevel, and it's just a combination of using the bevel to create some interesting shapes like this. We can select the top face and press I to inset. So that's the same as pressing E to extrude and scaling it. And then we could E to extrude, bring that down, I to inset, E to extrude, and we've got this weird pointy bit, and then control B to bevel. And you can create these weird looking things like this. If at any point you think, oh, I've gone a bit too far, you could, let's say, go to edge mode with two, select this edge loop here and control X to dissolve it. And that will get rid of those edges. So looking pretty cool. I'll just bevel this edge here. So control B to bevel, to create a nice smooth curve there. And this one here, so it's not too sharp, control B to bevel. And I'll leave the bottom for the moment because I want to talk about that a little bit later. So back out of edit mode, and we want to attach this to this object. Now, if this next bit seems complicated, then see my previous tutorial where I go into a little bit more detail. We come up to the snapping here, change that to face and change it to align rotation to target so that it will point outwards. And we also want to change it to center so it works on the origin point. That means we need to change our origin point so it's down the bottom here. I'll press one to go into front view, the easiest way to do that, I think, is to go into edit mode, select everything with A, G to grab in the Z axis and move it upwards. You don't want it right on the bottom, otherwise the sphere will hit like this. So you want it indented slightly so this object gets indented into your sphere. Then back into object mode and I want to copy this and place it on my object. Now you can press Shift D, but if we want to edit this in any way and have it update on all our objects, we can press Alt D for a linked duplicate. And then I can come across to here and snap it to our object. Now you may notice it snaps to the faces and rotates because we've got it set to snap to faces. And you can sometimes get an odd angle like this. So it may be a bit smoother if we have a few more faces on our sphere. So I'll leave that there for now. 
Select our sphere and I'll press Control 2 to do a subdivision surface modifier. I'll come across to the modifiers to show you that. So there's our modifier with two levels of subdivision because I press Control 2. If you press Control 3, it will be three levels and so on. And now if I select my object again and press G to grab and start snapping it onto our sphere, you can see that it's got a better alignment. At this stage, we can just press Alt D and duplicate it, then maybe scale it down, Alt D, and just move it around the place. Remember to change the scale and play around and have a bit of fun with this. Okay, so we've got a weird looking thing there that's kind of fun. And if I make any changes to this, so let's say right click shade smooth, it updates on all my other objects. Let's do that for the sphere as well. So select sphere, right click shade smooth. That looks a bit nicer. Now you may notice there's a hard edge between the base of our protruding bits and the center of the mine. We can come into our object. I'll zoom in on that, go to edit mode. And you might want to, if I press control R, do a loop cut down here and maybe select this bottom face loop with Alt left click and E to extrude, S to scale, Shift Z so it doesn't go in the Z axis. Oh, remember I've got snapping still on, so turn that off so it's a little bit easier. And I can create a kind of lip that will get inserted into my shape. Let's just see what that looks like on our other objects. So you can see that lip kind of getting inserted and it needs to go up a little bit so it doesn't overlap too much. So I'll come back to my shape here, Alt left click here and G then Z to move that up. Again, back to our object to see what that looks looking like. And that's working a bit better. Back to my original. And I might want to just even this out a bit with some bevels. So I'll select these two edge loops. So Shift, Alt, Left, Click, and Control, B, and just bevel those at the same time. If you want to make this look even better, then you can press Control, 1 to do a subdivision surface again. And that will give it a bit more smoothness. I might just want to sharpen up the edge loops in the base here. If I press this button, I can see my edge loops a little bit clearer. I can select these two then and control B to bevel those. I'll do that at the top here and control B to bevel. And of course, all the changes we make on that will update on our mine over here. So what about the materials? Let's go across to shading, zoom in on our mine and create a new material. I'll just move this up slightly so you can see it and call this dented metal. Now for this, you'll want to download a PBR material. Here's a really great one from freepbr.com. It's called Beaten Up Metal One, and you can download that just here. If you're not sure what a PBR material is, then check out the link in the description for more information on that. Once you've done that, back into Blender, you'll need the Node Wrangler add-on enabled for this to make it much quicker. So we go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, type in Node, and there's the Node Wrangler add-on. Make sure that's ticked, close that down, that enables me to select the principal BSDF and press Control Shift T. That essentially will set up the PBR material for me. So here's my beaten up metal material. I can see all the maps. If I press on the thumbnails, I can actually select everything and Blender will choose the ones it needs and press principled setup. And you can see that beaten up metal just there. And the Node Wrangler has plugged all the textures into their correct slots. However, the way it's currently unwrapped with a spherical unwrap, you can get pinching at the top like this. There's a way that works much better in this case we can change this to a box projection. So we come to our mapping, plug the object into the vector, and that will give us object oriented mapping, although it's projecting from the top downwards, so we get this stretch in the middle. To change that, we come into each texture and change it to box. And you can see it's projecting it as if it's a box onto our object. Unfortunately, you get these sharp lines down here where it's projected from this side and projected from this side and it meets in the middle. To change that, we change the blend of each of these textures. So back to the top, just blend it in slightly, and about 0.2 seems to work well for this material. You can be a little bit rough with this, they don't have to be all exactly the same, it doesn't make too much difference. And you can see that's blended those textures together, and we've got a really nice looking beaten up metal on our object. We can use the same one on this object, so I can select that, choose that dented metal, and it's not looking too bad. It would be nice to create that nice red glow around the middle. So with our object selected, go into edit mode, zoom in on that object, and we want to select the faces around this middle bit here. So to face mode, select that face loop here, and I can press control plus to grow that selection to make sure it's got it all. And I can create a new texture slot. So under the slots of the material, we create a new texture slot and assign it to these faces. Now it's turned white at the moment because there's no material in slot two, as you can see there. So I need to create a new one. So new material, I'll call this red light. I'll press the home key to find my texture. There it is. And I'll swap this to an emission. With the Node Wrangler installed, you don't have to delete and then add a new one. You can press Shift S to switch and then go to shader, emission shader. And I can change this to a red. It's looking good. Let's change the strength. So it's nice and bright. That's not having much effect. That's because we're in Eevee and Eevee doesn't use these emissions to light its scene. 
However, if we go across to the render settings here and turn the bloom on, we get that nice sort of glow and it looks like it's lighting the scene. You might also want to add a glow to other parts. So interface mode, select that edge loop, control plus to grow the selection. And once again, come down to our slots with the red light selected, assign those faces to that one. And we've got a crazy looking space mine. Now you might want to turn the ambient occlusion up. That gives a sort of shadow in here, which looks quite good. And you might just want to turn the distance up and play with that and see what sort of effect you get. Another thing I did, if I go back to my original dented material, where our base color texture meets our base color of the principal BSDF, I pressed Shift A and added in color. And the easiest one to understand is the hue and saturation node. So I plug that in there and you can bring down the value if you want it to look a little bit darker. Also, you might want a little bit of dirt and grime between where the protruding bits hit the mine. You can add in an ambient occlusion shader to help that. So Shift A to add, input, ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion is kind of the bits in the crevices. If I press Control Shift left click, I can see what the ambient occlusion looks like and I can mess with the distance to see the effects of that. We can increase this effect with a color ramp. So Shift A to add, Converter, Color Ramp, add that in there. And now I can bring the blacks up and you can see we're getting a sort of grimy texture. And I can always bring the whites up as well so you can see the grime in there. And now I just need to combine these two. We can use a mix shader for that. To do that automatically with the Node Wrangler installed, you can hold down Control Shift, right click and drag, and that's created a mix shader. Now it doesn't look great to start with. I'll just reposition these. Because it's just literally mixing them. A full factor will give you the bottom one. No factor will give you the top one. But we want the dark bits of this to be affecting this material here. For this, I'll need to swap them around, turn the factor up to one. So that's just the bottom one at the moment. We want the influence of the bottom one to just be the dark bits. And I can change the blend mode to multiply and it will just be the dark bits like this, which is pretty much what we want. Let's plug that now into the base color. Control shift left click on the principled BSDF to see the results. And we got some griminess in the gaps here. We can obviously change our color ramp to suit depending on how much griminess you want. And you can be really clever with this, adding some rust in there as well, using this color ramp to mix the two, but that's a bit more advanced. And there we have our funky looking space mine. Now, if we go to render mode, Let's jump across to that. We haven't got an HDRI in the background, so we're not getting any of the reflections. So you'll need to come across to the shader editor, change across the world. I'll press the home key to zoom in on our nodes. With the background selected, I'll press control T, and then I can bring in an environment texture. For this, you'll need to download an HDRI. Press open. I've got lots of HDRIs that I downloaded, mainly from Polyhaven, link in the description. And you can use any of these to create a nice reflection on your object. I'll choose this one open it up and you can see those nice reflections there. If you want it looking really nice, then we can jump across the cycles and the lights from these emissions will actually light the mine. If I go back to object, I can adjust the red light strength as I see fit to give it an interesting look. So that's how we make a space mine. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions, then comment below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.